helping our Democrats over the next years. Anybody wants to be in his loves to be in Mexico. Uh, so let me give you Tara Nix. for the Texas Food and Mexican Nation. So I have the great privilege of introducing our very special guest. He has been a champion for progressive causes throughout New Mexico and the United States over the last few years. A man who gives his time unconditionally and we've all grown to appreciate. So with a warm and big round of applause, please also welcome Ambassador Joe Wilson. I get to do the ask. <laughs> so let me just say, first of all, thank you all for attending. My understanding is that this is a really good crowd for the opening of this office. And I think it's a very important office. We've been supporting this program for a number of years in our family. Let me just also acknowledge Tim Eichenberg, if he's still here, who's running for state treasurer. He just ran to another event, so he had to go to another event, but he supported everything we do. And of course, Javier, who announced uh, this morning that he was running for, uh, uh, for mayor. And I look forward to the rest of you, Mr. Mayor. You can always still address me. Also, Richard, thank you very much for everything that you're doing to make sure that we have a, a more progressive Santa Fe City Council and Santa Fe Mayor's Office. Obviously, Mort and, uh, and Carol Oppenheimer for everything that you do on all these causes. Thank you so much. And um, when they write me and say, will you do this, you can't say no. Is there anybody in this room that's been able to say no to Carol? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so gentle, and they're so nice, and they won't take their hand off your wrist until you say yes. I <laughs> and then finally, a John Henry, to whom I did actually say no to uh, not too long ago. Thank you so much for everything that you do for the city of Santa Fe and for Mexico. I, uh, I generally do foreign policy. I don't do a lot of domestic policy, and one of the reasons, when, when John was kind enough to ask me to think about running for government, one of the reasons I couldn't bring myself to do it is because the issues that rivet my attention are issues like growing up in the Middle East and in Syria. And yet, when I'm called upon um, uh, to, to, to come out and talk about something like working in America, I go back. And as I think about it, I recall what Richard Haas's book, most recent book, was. Foreign policy begins at home. If you're going to make our foreign policy solid, you have to make our domestic policy solid. And that brings me back down to ground level and to the community in which we have been privileged to live for the last six and a half years. And those of you who, who know us, and have seen us over the years here, know how restorative and, and, and how healthy Santa Fe has been to us and our family. So we're delighted. Valerie can't be here tonight because my son's got a soccer game and went to be there. But we are absolutely delighted to be citizens of New Mexico, and particularly this week. And unfortunately, Pat Davis isn't here to savor the victory of gay marriage going viral Oh. It's marriage going by. Because, you know, marriage, whoever you want, it's great. So anyway, I'm sorry he's not here. Now, as I thought about working in America today, and we've done a number of these things, I went back and I just wanted to remind you of the issues that working America deals with. If you haven't looked at the website, we um, it is a panoply of really important issues. And they're issues we look at um, if we really want to make our economy, of our city, move forward. So let me just go through them for you. Um, and these are, these are the general ones. I know we'll get to the, the, the ones we're working on in the next year. Healthcare. What's wrong with that? Anybody against healthcare for all Americans? Good jobs. Anybody against jobs? Today, there are these strikes all, you know, all throughout the fast food industry. 
Last time I had a chance to uh, speak publicly, it was a drug policy alliance meeting, and I spoke behind somebody who was very, very uh, articulate, Ethan, the head of the drug policy alliance. Today I get to speak behind what happened on the Lincoln Memorial yesterday with everybody from Al Sharpton and Barack Obama talking about, among other things, jobs. Um, I can't articulate it nearly as well as they can, but what I can say is that it is important and working America has it as one of the key issues that they work on. Uh, retirement security, I'm at that age. Some of us in this room are at that age. We'd like to be more secure in our retirement. Quality education, Valerie works with the United Way on Education Santa Fe. We all know what an outstanding issue that is, Javier. This will be one of the things that I will be in your office every day of need to be to get this thing sorted out so our kids can go to the very best schools. Our kids from every neighborhood in this town can go to the very best schools. Corporate accountability, that's a non start. That's a that's self-evident. Unemployment, workplace rights, and, and as a former uh, union employee, I'm uh, really interested in things like workplace rights and, and, uh, and what we can do with these people. What the work, work, Working America uh, will be doing here in, uh, in Santa Fe, uh, in addition to sort of following up on on things like the Community Workforce Agreement, which we still need to fight. Obviously, we need to fight harder. And I would just say that the only, the, the nobody who was involved in that terrible vote on the Community Workforce Agreement is here tonight. <laughs> the one person who supports the Community Workforce Agreement is here, the next mayor of Santa Fe. Yeah. So, when you think about the other communities, just remember that as progressive. So I, I just, um, what we're doing here, obviously, is a living wage and extending the living wage uh, beyond the city limits and out to the county limits and beyond the county limits everywhere else. And town uh, is, um, is going to be doing that for us. Uh, and hopefully in a couple of months you'll have Javier helping out. Javier, who used to have a job with the county. Uh, and certainly, um, you will have all of our support as we do this. Um, just tonight, before I came over, there was a piece on uh, one of the cable news networks about what it's like uh, to have a part-time job in a fast food restaurant or at Walmart and to try to support your family uh, on that salary. And it is appalling. Uh, we are better than that. We are better than that as a nation. We have proven that. We proved that 50 years ago. We proved that with General Motors and Ford, uh, or whatever you may think of Henry Ford, when he made the basic point that you pay your employees enough that they can afford the car that you're producing. Uh, now McDonald's goes by the view that you pay them enough that they can afford a hamburger once a month. <laughs> so uh, this is the fight. It is a good fight. It is a noble fight. If you believe in it, uh, be prepared to act on those beliefs, both in the electoral campaigns we have coming up, and we've got a number coming up in the next year, and also with the generosity, and this is where the ask comes. You guys had a few good hot dogs tonight, a few good hamburgers. Put your wallets, bring your wallets out, and support this, this, uh, this activity. No, put your but put your hands in your pockets and get out your checkbooks. There's hot here. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much. So I will expand a little bit because in case you don't have the checkbook in hand already and you would rather give up your time, we have a lot of ways you can do that. So first let me give you a little rundown about Working America and the state for those of you who have not had a chance to meet any of the lovely staff that are standing around these back walls and have been bringing in and out the food. Working America has been in New Mexico for the last five years. They've been champions in multiple counties, and we are fortunate enough to now have them in our backyard. <clears throat> and so, Chelsea, oh, Chelsea, it is all because of Chelsea. She has been the rock solid aspect of this whole operation for five years throughout New Mexico. And we are lucky that she's here and lucky that I get to work with her and that we all benefit from her knowledge about how to really represent workers' rights throughout the state. 
Um, so here in Santa Fe, we have a nice little office now that is open. I'm pretty much here now on a daily basis. Uh, but you're always welcome to call me and ask to come by or just drop on in and someone will be here to answer any questions or give you more petition signatures or give you some data, entry to data um, to enter. But what we're doing is trying to extend the minimum wage and it doesn't stop there. You know, one of the great things about Santa Fe is that we are at the forefront of everything that goes on in this state. If we're going to, if we pass something that's progressive, other counties follow suit. Um, while other counties have raised their minimum wage, they do not hold a candle to what Santa Fe does as a city. That's what we want to do throughout the rest of the county, and we cannot do it without you. Honestly, your your hours, your knocking on doors, your getting petitions petition signature signed. Our goal is to get 7,000 7, petition signatures. We want every commission commissioner to understand that in their district, it is wanted, it is needed, and it is mandatory. We have 4,500 members of Working America already in Santa Fe. We continue to, to grow that number on a daily basis. And that's because of a lot of work that people in this room have done. And I do want to give a little shout out to a lot of people who made this possible almost a decade ago. Um, so if you don't mind waving so everybody can give you a applause at the end because we would not be at this place right now without your hard work. So David Thompson, Mark, Mark Gordon, this lovely table up here. And if you're on Twitter, the living wage, that, that is Lissa. I mean, she is absolutely phenomenal. She Twitters every day. She has over 1,500 followers. She really takes it to the next level on social media. And we would not be able to do what we do. And a lot of you probably wouldn't be here without reading her tweets. So we, we really appreciate what you do, still to this day. Um, Carolyn Morty, of course, no introduction needed. Um, so for This is 10 years in the making. I'm coming in at the last bit of it, and we are really doing this push hard over the next month. We have multiple opportunities for you to volunteer. You're going to get a nice little packet with you when you leave today. So I'm going to pass around the sheet in case you might want to sign up initially before I call you and ask you and beg you to do it. But what you'll get today is a list of all the volunteer activities we have coming up throughout the month of September. Underneath it, you'll see a talking points about what the living wage actually is, how to talk about it to your friends, to your family, to your neighbors, to your schools, to your organizations, any kind of body. If you're on the bus, we, we, it's amazing how many people just take on the bus and get them signed. People want to sign. People are happy to sign. You don't get turned down. It's not a hard ask. Everyone that's in city limits understands what that raise did for them and understand what it would do for everyone outside the city limits. And then last but not least, you'll get two petition signatures sheets. I know it might seem like a lot, but we really, really wish that you would do this and then mail it back into this address on your bottom sheet within the next two weeks. Again, we have a big goal, 7,000. So if you're interested in volunteering, I have all your names up there and don't think that I won't call you because I will call you. Uh, but just so you have an understanding about what we're doing, we're doing uh, Zizobra. Uh, we'll have, if you want to go, you'll get a free badge to get in there. We'll get petition signatures before the event starts. We'll be done by 7, and then you can go and enjoy the event. We'll be at the parade for the two hours starting from 11 to 1, doing the petition signature gathering as well. Um, and then every weekend for this month, we will be at the Catholic churches and some other Interfaith Alliance member churches getting petitioner signatures from their petitioners. Um, and that's a big deal for us because that is thousands and thousands of people. So it, ideally we need 20 people at every church literally helping us bum rush as they get out of church to get all their signatures. So I can't beg you enough to help. You don't have the time, but you have the money. This bowl right here will be where you drop off the check. And I know you'll make Joe Wilson very, very happy if you put money in there. And you'll also make us very happy because it will help pay for our office um, that we are so blessed to have thanks to Richard Ellenberg. So I thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed the food. And if I can answer any of your questions, I'll stay, stick around. But um, feel free to mingle and finish eating. But thank you for coming.